I'm Zoe Delhunty Light, and this Elden Ring lore video is all about our dear decaying Melania, Blade of Mikela. Melania and Mikela were born of the goddess Queen Marika the Eternal and her consort Radigan, who are actually the same god split in two. This part incest, part god knows what, means Melania and Mikela were both born cursed. Mikela was cursed with a turtle childhood, never being able to grow into an adult, and Melania was born with scarlet rot in her veins. To understand Melania, therefore, you need to understand the Scarlet Rot. Starting with the aptly named Lake of Rot, it's one of the most obvious places on the map, apart from Kaelid, where Rot reigns supreme. The Lake of Rot is a great lake of standing water that's said to have the divine essence of an outer god sealed in the nearby lands. Scraps of information pile up and up to give a clearer idea of what the Rot is, where it comes from, and how it's been seen throughout the centuries. I know from descriptions of that mushroom armour that long ago great lords served the Scarlet Rot, perhaps with mushrooms as their crowns. The link between mushrooms and the Scarlet Rot is further strengthened by the description of mushrooms, which says that to those enraptured by the Scarlet Rot, mushrooms are the holy vestments that root one to the earth. Plus, toxic mushrooms reveal that the skilled hands can repurpose them into a ward against Scarlet Rot. That implies that these great lords may have used mushrooms as protection against the Rot which they worshipped, hence it becoming their armour and crowns or whatnot, and and therefore central to their garb. Outside of the Great Lords, other creatures worship the Rot, and specifically the Goddess of Rot. The major ones are those prawn slash millipede-like beings known variously as the Kindred of Rot, the Servants of Rot, or Pests, who come from the Swamp of Aeonia. I'm going to call them Kindred from henceforth. It's no coincidence that the Aeonian butterfly comes from the same swamp, and according to myth, these butterflies were once the wings of the Goddess of Rot herself. Sadly, according to the Pest Glaive description, these kindred are smart, but their intelligence is such that it can never be understood by men. To these kindred, they've been forsaken by their goddess for unknown reasons, and plead for their goddess to return in this prayer that reads, O scarlet blossoms, flourish in distant lands and return to us, the unwanted children. Scarlet Aeonia slash Blossoms, by the way, is a flower which emits scarlet rot and is typically language used by those who worship it. So watch out for people who call it scarlet blossoms or scarlet buds and such like. To them, rot is the death that begets life, that comes to all equally. They call themselves the unwanted children, and in the description of the pest thread incantation, they're even called the abandoned children of the goddess. As they come from the swamps of Aeonia, just like the Aeonian butterflies, they could genuinely be the offspring of the goddess of rot if it also originates from the swamp of Aeonia and all signs point to that being the case. As is obvious by now, these kindred of rot worship the scarlet rot as the cycle of rebirth put into practice, echoing Gowrie's sentiments. He calls rot the cycle of decay and rebirth, though if you're on the opposing end of the scarlet rot, you're probably not going to have that positive view of it. Make a mental note of that because I will talk more about Gowry in my next Elden Ring lore video. Devoted to the goddess of rot, the kindred worship the scorpion's stinger dagger found deep underground, safely in a chest within its own temple. Its description reads, a dagger fashioned from a great scorpion's tail, glistening with scarlet rot, a ceremonial tool used by heretics, crafted from the relic of a sealed outer god. I think this means that the god of rot, the outer god that originated the rot that is, has its emissaries in the lands between appear as scorpions. As is obvious by that history lesson, the rot has been around for a long time. It's claimed many lives, but has been vanquished at least once. The blue dancer charm tells that story. It represents a fairy who, in legend, bestowed a flowing sword upon a blind swordsman with a curved sword patterned after flowing water. Blade in hand, garbed in blue, the swordsman sealed away the ancient god that was Rot itself. I figured out a bit more about this blind swordsman and where they come from. Elden Ring's character creation menu has the warrior class decked out in blue and equipped with dual curved swords. The description of their blue garb says that the blue colour symbolises brisk waters, as fluid and flowing as the sword in the hand of its wearer. Just as still waters turn foul, stagnation leads to decay. Warriors must remain ever drifting, 
Hence, these warriors being nomadic. You must have seen this next revelation coming, but whoever the blind swordsman was, they were a nomadic warrior of the same clan as the Elden Ring warrior class. Look at the blind swordsman imagery in the game and they even have the same cowl as the warriors. This might be why we don't know loads about them. Once they had sealed the outer god of rot away, they continued on their nomadic journey and left the lands between. This also means that water is the natural enemy of rot as, mentioned in the description, still waters turn foul and stagnation leads to decay. I'm almost done with explaining the scarlet rot, but just one last thing. In the water sword description, there's the description of an attack the blind swordsman used that is akin to a dance, which, when paired with the water imagery and blue garb, I'm sure is a precursor to, or the actual, waterfowl dance, which is the same attack Melania uses with the blade of Mikola. I'm still looking for more information about this blind swordsman, yet this similarity between Melania and the swordsman who sealed away rot all those centuries ago suggests that there's more to this character and they must have some kind of connection to Melania. Otherwise, how on earth would she have learned their trademark attack? Okay, I'm finally done with the Scarlet Rot. So, now that you know what the Scarlet Rot is, let's talk about the Blade of Mikola and eventual Goddess of Rot herself, Melania. Born infested with Scarlet Rot, she gravitated towards swordsmanship from a young age, possibly so she could protect her younger brother Mikola, who was cursed with eternal youth. This would make sense as Melania viewed Mikola to be the most powerful Empyrean and probably took it upon herself to be his protector. Quickly becoming known as a formidable opponent on the battlefield, Melania's prowess didn't dissuade the pathetic Godric the Grafted from insulting the red-haired warrior and consequently, begging for his life when she easily beat him in combat to avenge the insult. I've made a lore video on Godric the Grafted in the past, so if you want to know more about him and how much of a dick he is, then you can go watch that. With rot coursing through her veins, Melania always had to deal with it affecting her body in one way or another. I don't know if she was born without her arm and leg, or if they had to be amputated due to finally falling victim to rot, or got damaged in battle, but however it happened, Melania would eventually become known for her golden arm and leg. Consecrating these limbs turned them resistant to rot, and they became symbolic of her war victories, possibly indicating that her limbs were indeed lost in combat. A sword was built into her prosthetic arm, and some soldiers even claimed to have seen wings when she raised it aloft. Wings of fierce determination that have never known defeat. To me, this feels like foreshadowing her eventual transformation into the goddess of rot, or perhaps more literally, these wings might be the early signs that her scarlet rot was going to bloom in the future. Warfare gave Melania the outlet to hone her most formidable skill, the waterfowl dance. Like I said before, to me this waterfowl dance is the same attack used by the blind swordsman who sealed the rot away, but precisely how Melania and the swordsman are connected remains a mystery. Melania's skills, confidence and determination earned her many admirers across the lands between, but none as devoted slash creepy as Malay Marais of the House Marais. Within the shaded castle, the seat of House Marais, Malay started to worship Melania as his own personal goddess after hearing of the Scarlet Rot. As the sons of House Marais were always born sickly, it's possible that Melania, being plagued with Rot herself, yet being a symbol of strength, was something he wished for the Marais sons. In the Shaded Castle, there's even a portrait of Melania in the Great Hall with prosthetic limbs displayed in homage to her. Malay was dedicated, I'll give him that. Following the Shattering, Melania was amongst those who vied for the role of Elden Lord. Kaelid was the site of the last battle between General Radan and Melania, but she wasn't alone. Clean Rot Knights fought alongside Melania. These soldiers vowed to fight alongside her, despite the inevitable putrefaction of their flesh due to being in close proximity to her rot. Their acceptance of their fate made their battles the fiercest of all, and their dedication meant they quickly became celebrated for their undefeated campaigns in the Shattering. For decades, Melania had resisted the call of the Scarlet Rot within her and the power it held. Millicent tells the Tarnished that her dignity and sense of self gave her the strength to resist the power of the Scarlet Rot. Millicent also implies that it was during the Battle of Aeonia between Radan and Melania 
that Melania abandoned her pride and let her scarlet rot loose. My next law video will be about Millicent as well as Gowrie, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested in Millicent's story. As you almost definitely already know, it was during the Battle of Aeonia between General Radan that Melania unleashed her scarlet Aeonia, blossoming and spreading waves of rot through Kaelid. This was her last resort. Pierced by Radan's swords and near defeat, letting her scarlet Aeonia bloom was the equivalent of triggering a bomb. Radan became corrupted with rot, turning him insane, and Kaelid was completely corrupted by rot. Bordering Kaelid in Redmain Castle, according to the Flamberge sword description, the scarlet rot was kept at bay with fire. Before I move on, if you look at the moment in the trailer where Melania's scarlet Aeonia blossoms, it looks like spores come from within. Spores remind me of mushrooms, which, just like I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, relates to those great lords that wore mushroom armour during their scarlet rot worship. These spores are also going to be important when talking about Millicent in my next lore video, so make a mental bookmark of that. The Battle of Aeonia marks the first time Melania's Scarlet Aeonia blossomed, and with every bloom, Melania's rot advances within her. Once it blooms three times, Melania will become the Goddess of Rot. Unleashing her scarlet rot came with a price. Melania fell into a deep slumber as her body shut down to recover from the huge exertion required to bloom her scarlet Aeonia. Thanks to one of the few survivors, clean rot knight Finlay, Melania escaped the Battle of Aeonia intact. Finlay carried the sleeping Empyrean to the Halig Tree all on her own, I'll explain the Halig Tree in the next lore video, defending her lord from any foes that dared to approach. Finlay perished once she had sequestered Melania safely at the foot of the Halig Tree, and there Melania would wait for her brother Mikola to return. Melania stayed at the foot of the Halig Tree alone. Her brother Mikola was supposed to be there waiting for her in his cocoon, but Mog had abducted him in his quest to become consort to an Elden Lord. Melania would remain by her brother's tree, waiting for him to return. Before I get onto the boss fight, if you look around the area preceding it, you can see another Scarlet Aeonia in bloom. This would be the second time her rot bloomed, and the third bloom happens during your boss fight with her, heralding her transformation into her final form, the Goddess of Rot. Why and when her Scarlet Aeonia bloomed for the second time, I'm not quite sure. However, I assume it was to fend off an attacking force of some kind. When the Tarnished meets Melania, she is defeated again and is forced to let her Scarlet Aeonia bloom for the third time, turning her into the Goddess of Rot. Any new Age of Rot is brought to a swift end, however, by the Tarnished as they slay Melania, leaving Mikela alone should he ever return to the Halic Tree. And that's the lore and origins of the Scarlet Rot and Melania in Elden Ring. I have loads more videos about Elden Ring lore live on the channel right now, so make sure to check them out if you want to know about Rani, Radan, Rikard, Godric the Grafted, Godfrey the First Elden Lord, Mog or Morgoth. The next one is going to be about Mikella, Millicent and Gowrie, so if you want to know even more about the Rot and the Twins, keep an eye out for it. Do you have any other characters or events you're curious about and would like me to cover, apart from the obvious ones? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now, I'm going to go and start worshipping Melania like Malay Marae did, so I'll see you next time. <laughs>